So you can see they really love this stuff. Hi everybody, Derek here at Blue Cactus. So we have been getting a lot of rain lately. I, I say a lot loosely, a lot for here in the desert anyway, and things are finally starting to green up. And whenever uh, the rainy season comes, these mesquite trees, they get all these beans on them. I'll show you. These are mesquite beans. This is a mesquite tree. Looks more like a big bush, but anyway, they get these beans on them and they're heavy. And uh, with all the leaves and all the beans on these trees, they get they get big and ugly and droopy, and it's just they need trimmed up. So the mesquite tree is kind of the only thing we've got here in the desert for shade. Um, and we're lucky to have these big ones. Um, they start out as little bushes and you just kind of trim them. You know, you just keep trimming them up. And if you're lucky, eventually you can stand under them and get a little bit of shade. So they get big and heavy. And I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to trim, I'm trying to lighten them so they go up and you can stand under the tree and enjoy it. See how that went up a little? Nice, huh? So we want this one to go up. So we'll try taking some weight off it and see if it makes it look any better. Yeah, it went up a little. You okay? Well, that's not good. You are expensive and too important to this operation to just have you fallen like that. And just stay put right there for a minute, safer for you. So I know a lot of people right there are gonna say, why don't I have a chainsaw? And it's like, this is my favorite tool for doing what I'm doing. That was the biggest cut that I had. It would have took longer than that to walk to the chainsaw. So it's just not worth getting it out, just trimming these little branches and stuff right now. So, so that's why. This one's gotta go because I'm tired of walking into it. Anything 
it touching my head I'm trying to get rid of basically that's just a big ugly crossed branch you see what I mean that's this thing here is just growing into that one that that branch there is growing the right way up and this one is just stuck underneath it trying to grow out to get to the light so we're just gonna take it right here <laughs> And then I'll get some of those right there. But before I can do that, because I'll probably have to get on a ladder, I need to get rid of some of this stuff. So, just in case you don't know this trick, I call this, uh, I don't really call it anything, but if you wanted to call it something, I guess it'd be a sled. So I pick a decent sized branch like that, throw it on the bottom, throw little stuff in there, most of the time these mesquites are full of needles, but this one's really not that bad. But anyway, you can pile stuff on there like a so. And then I usually get a, I don't know, some sort of decent one if we're on top. And then kind of grab the bottom one and at the top one and sled it away. So since this is Arizona and these are really small branches and stuff, we, we don't have to let this season for two years or anything. Um, I'll leave this stuff in these piles. Um, there's another big pile right here. I will just let this stuff set until uh, January or February and we'll be able to cook out with it then. And if that sounds ridiculous to you, cooking out in January or February, that's because you don't live in Arizona. It's really not that cold here and uh it probably feels like what you would call fall so we enjoy cooking out that time of year today is not an ideal to cook out it's 99 degrees or something hot for a high but so that's what we do with most of that stuff but we uh we do feed some of it to the goats so we'll take them some right now come here kids So you can see they really love this stuff. Now too much of this can make them sick, so you don't want to give them too much. You can tell, the first indications are there, you'll start getting the clumpies, and then it'll turn to diarrhea. And then uh, I don't know what happens if you keep going. Whenever we see something like that, you just, you just stop. As a treat, they love it. Too much will make them sick though. Hi. So all their trees in here I've already trimmed. And I trimmed them all up because they were, they had a lot of low-lying branches and they were nibbling at all of them and it was giving them the runs. So I lift that up a little. Look at it, there was already beans all over. They've already kind of eaten them all. Hi, Ren. Hi, yeah. Ren, there's Moby. Here is uh, Marsha Marsha right here. Back there, that moon spotted girl, that's Revel. That one right there is one of Winnie's that survived, that made it. And I believe the other one is, I'm not, I'm not positive, but I believe it's this one right here. Yes but I could be wrong on that, don't hold me to that. I know a lot of you are probably wondering, we have, uh, we have decided to not sell the remaining kids this year. We, we, ha we put on a sale every year and we, we didn't have the time this year, this spring, so we only, we only gave it like a week. We had to get it over with. We needed the money, you know? So it had to happen when it happened and so we only kind of gave the world like one week's notice. Other than that, all of them would have sold. Um, and I bet they'd sell right now, but we really don't have time to do the, the big delivery thing. And 
And anyway, we just gonna, we're gonna raise them up and sell them in the spring as yearlings, which means they are gonna need names. So I believe one of the next videos my wife has planned is uh, taking all these ones out, because I don't even remember. I bet you one, I bet you one of these is Cassie and Cammie's, and I bet you that, that one right there has a moon spot on it, so it could be Cassie's. But anyway, Crystal and Emily, of course, they know who all, all of them are, but they're all gonna need names. Um, because they are going to be here till till this spring, so it'll just help make the the math add up. You know, if you guys remember me talking about like there's, you know, how many goats do you have to have to breed, blah 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 blah. So anyway, if, because they didn't sell, they'll sell in the spring, and that'll help. It'll just it'll just the math will be the same as if we bred 24 goats again, even though we're only going to breed eight, maybe 12. But that's the deal with these girls here. So yep. A uh, little bit of mesquite is okay. Too much will give them the runs, and you don't want that. But I can see the other girls, like Dreamer over there, staring at me. She says, Are we getting some too? Hey. Ooh, Mayo wants some. Hey, Mayo. Hey, Hold on, legend. I'll give you some, buddy. So here we have, this is Hank, and this is another one of Winnie's kids that survived. And then we have a, another buckling that didn't sell. Pretty sure he's gonna be a weather. And, and up here, this is our, these are the girls that are still in milk. You can see how they want some of this. And I'm not giving them too much. Like I said, just a little bit's okay. And I kind of put it on a fence that's so not just laying in the ground you know but and then here we have the the four girls that were for sale that are probably going to be bred again this year but don't hold me to that we have ray tippy bessie and pepper and of course may here may stand with these girls because well she's the oldest goat we have and we don't want her with these ruffians but may has been retired and over here we have cammy maddie cassie and lily and of course they love the uh the uh mesquite as well and over here we have legend and champ and of course their main concern is there is something on the fence and they don't like it actually they love it you can see champ there's just rubbing his head all over the thing and legend here hi buddy you want to say hi you love mesquite see they, they they don't care much as they don't care as much about eating it other than just rubbing all over the dang thing huh and up here we have the huckster and marshall and he's excited to have this see in this pen they did have their own mesquite tree but they of course killed it which is what they do right buddy yeah as we get closer to breeding time, we'll start doing more videos with the bucks in them because I know we don't show them all the time, but there's just so much going on and so many animals, it's kind of hard to work them all into every video. But here is Aragon and Aragon and Vader right there. They have their own mesquite tree, so I'm not giving them anything because every time the wind blows, a bean or something falls to the ground. And you can see they don't even care they get it so much ain't that right champ yeah 
All right, so on other news, we have been really, really busy around here getting ready for the first show that my wife is ever gonna chair, which means, I believe it means she is officially in charge of everything, the chairman. But of course, there is all kinds of people helping out and working behind the scenes with her to make this happen. It is definitely not possible for one person to pull it off alone. And as of now, we have a whole slew of sponsors that have helped out. And uh, we wanna say thank you to Desert Heart Dairy Goats Echo Ridge Farms, Benson, Feed and Supply, Green Acres, Goat Posse, Old Tucson, the patrons of Blue Cactus, um, of course the Southern Arizona Dairy Goat Association, the Arizona State Goat Breeders Association, El Taco Loco is going to be there selling street tacos, um, Bad Habit Barn, Freckled Fanny Nigerians, Sierra Vista Nigerian Dairy Goats, and Clawson Party of Five. If you'd like to help sponsor the uh, my wife's first show that she's chairing down in Sierra Vista on Saturday, August 17th, is that right, babe? Correct. Yeah, just email my wife, Crystal, at... BlueCactusGoats at Hotmail.com. Awesome. All right, guys, so I am going to finish trimming this tree, and you guys are going to go in the house and see what my wife has cooking. Hey guys, so today we are going to be making another one of our best sellers and this is our rose clay and charcoal bar. So before we dive into making this awesome soap, I just want to remind you guys that right now we are offering a 20% off sale on all orders over $50 and that is globally guys. So no matter where you're at, you can certainly purchase the soap and still get 20% off as long as you spend $50. So head on over to the Etsy shop, the link is in the description below and buy yourself some amazing blue cactus soap. All right, so this is what our gorgeous rose clay and charcoal bar looks like. Um, so obviously the pink is from the rose clay, and then these little lines in here are from the activated charcoal. So as always, we're gonna start with my secret mix of oils here, uh, which may or may not include olive oil, castor oil, shea butter, and coconut oil. And to the oils, we are going to add some really, really high quality uh, rose kaolin clay. Now this is actually a really awesome clay. Um, it has such a great texture and it's super fine. The rose clay in this bar actually is kind of a power ingredient, if you will. Um, the rose clay is just so gentle and it's going to gently remove any uh, dead skin cells and clean out your pores. And then to the oils in rose clay, we're gonna add lovely Nigerian dwarf goat milk with the highest butter fat of all dairy goats. Of course, thanking my ladies for it. They work hard to provide you guys with amazing soaps. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to mix this all up with the blender until it is completely incorporated evenly, all the milk all the clay and all of the oils. Here we go. It's not blending just a you know a bunch of lye on the bottom um, and making the blender try to work too hard to mix all of it together rather 
nice. Okay. Now we are going to blend this, and I do need it to be a little bit thick. I uh, can't have it too runny with layering, which I will show you guys here shortly. Now it's all blended together um, and at this point it is definitely going to start turning into soap and I'm just going to check, see it's going to thick up on me actually pretty darn quick so I'm going to start moving, let's get the molds. Okay so what we're going to be doing here is just kind of layering it, not kind of, actually layering it. So we're going to do a bottom portion of the rose clay and then we're going to do the messy sprinkle of charcoal. We're going to do another layer of the rose clay and then a sprinkle of charcoal. And then the top is also rose clay. So here we go. I'm just going to do a third of the mold um, down here on the bottom. So this part, you don't have to be too precise with, but... See how thick it gets? And it is um, the rose clay, actually. That's what makes it thick quick. Um, but that's okay. I will be just fine with its consistency. Okay. Now I am going to just kind of pat it down. I'm not looking for a completely flat bottom or anything. It's okay if it's a little textured. And it's not a straight charcoal line by any means. So now for the charcoal. Now this is activated charcoal and it is an amazing natural ingredient actually for your skin. And just look at that dark, gorgeous black color. I absolutely love it. I don't care to work with charcoal so much because it's so fine and it's just a powder and it really, really makes a mess. So you guys are going to see that. Um, however, charcoal is an amazing ingredient for your soaps. It pulls out impurities and toxins. Um, so toppling it with the amazing rose clay, it is just super, super perfect in a bar of soap. Uh, it's mild enough for the face, but it's also uh, super awesome as a body bar. So for the charcoal, I'm just going to set my, my jar of charcoal right here and hope I don't spill it. Um, but the point is, is I'm using this little sifter and just a teaspoon that I'm going to very gently put into here. Um, and again, because charcoal is so fine, it'll go right through that sifter if you're not careful and give you big piles of charcoal, which is not what we're trying to achieve. So here, oh so nicely, and I'm gonna move it because it's going. All right, that's good for now. Let's see, and then I am going to just layer the whole bottom with charcoal and just kind of tap in it like a soap. And of course it gets all over the edges which makes it really really messy but it is worth it I will say that it's a great bar. And if you get too carried away tappy tapping away um, and you end up with huge clumps of it or just too much of it to where it's not actually absorbing into the soap slightly, then your bar will separate when you cut it. The different layers of the charcoal soap portion um, will actually separate. So you don't want that. All right, just one good layer. Okay. Now again, I must be on my best behavior with making a mess because I usually have it everywhere by now. I'm killing it guys, doing great. And 
And as I said, the charcoal, or I'm sorry, the rose clay does make your soap um, thicken up super, super quick. So I am trying to move a little quick, but obviously also still trying to do it right here. All right, so now another layer of the rose clay and check it out. Do you see how thick that is? How quickly that happens? Um, we're still in the safe zone though, so it's okay. I'm gonna stir it again real quick. So if you've heard me talk about ricing, it's just really, it just kind of looks like there's lumpies in there. And it just happens from setting um, and then trying to disturb it. So just give it a quick stir and that goes away. So here we go. And I am just pouring it over the spatula because I don't necessarily want it to break through the other layer. I want it to sit on top. Okay, let's just smooth this out some and make sure I, I pat it down in all of the corners and everything because like I said at this point it's thick so if you don't do that you end up with like little hair, uh, air pockets on the side of the soap which isn't fun. It is so pretty. Beautiful color. Check you out, rose clay. All right. Aww. Just give this a quick little stir. And another tip too, like if you are taking your time, kind of working a design or anything like that, if you keep stirring the soap um, that you haven't used yet, it keeps it thinner longer. So if it's just sitting there with no movement, it thickens up quicker on you. All right, here we go again. I'm actually gonna add just a little more charcoal here because I think I'll run out if I don't. There we go. I'm lying. Hold on, just a little on the edges. Okay, now we just put the rest right on top. Same technique. So again, just gonna stir this rose clay up so there's no clumpies in here. And go. This is getting thick enough. I might have to plop it on, but we'll see. Or it's not breaking through at this point, so that's good. Here we go. Now, all the mess I made with the charcoal on the side here, I'm not really trying to pull it in. Um, when I clean the edges up, it does pull in a little bit of charcoal on the top of the soap that I end up um, using for my topping to swirl it in, and it just looks really cool. But the whole um, top. I don't necessarily want that charcoal in, so I'm going to try to be a little careful, like I do, but that doesn't mean um, I won't get a little charcoal in here, so that'll be fine. Lovely. Alright, like I said, it's thick enough now. I don't have to pour it over the spatula. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean up my mess a little bit and then get these edges and then we are going to top it.
Perfect. Okay, so now that it's all cleaned up um, and I'm not hanging out in a, in a cloud of charcoal dust here, we can top it. So all I do for the topping is use a skewer or a really big toothpick, whatever you'd feel like calling it, um, and we are just going to literally swirl the top. So here we go, and I'll show you what I meant with as I wiped the edges here, um, if you guys can see that charcoal that came in, and I like that. I just like it on the edges, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to start swirling. This is um, kind of the topping, to be honest, that I started with because it was easy. Um, I knew it would end up being pretty, and it just wasn't real detailed. So it's gorgeous and it's simple, and I felt um, just just proud of the topping before I really uh, dove into too many more different toppings because it takes a little bit of learning. But for this bar, I just love this topping. It, it's absolutely perfect because it just kind of swirls that charcoal in just a little bit on the top. And if it's at the right consistency, which we are right here, we're actually approaching to where it's too far gone and it would just leave gapes um, and holes in it, but as I kind of moved the skewer around. But right now we're still good. And it just really, really, you can see those swirls in there. So how pretty is that with the, with the charcoal that comes through here and there? Love that. Pull that in. See what I mean here, guys? So I was approaching too thick. If you get too far there, then you can't, you kind of can't correct those um, where it just kind of cuts through the soap, I guess. But it's still the consistency where I can fix it, just going back over it. Love this. All right, got the edges, come back through in the middle, pull a little of that charcoal through. Pretty! And check her out. So this little beauty here, the rose clay and charcoal bar. Such a pretty topping. And it really is an amazing bar. If you guys have not tried it, you are missing out. Um, and it's actually the same technique as I use on my turmeric and charcoal bar. So this is the one that I'm going to start making next because I have the charcoal out and it's already a mess anyway. Uh, so head on over to the Etsy shop, you guys, and get yourself some rose clay and charcoal and throw in some turmeric and charcoal. You're going to love that one too. And of course, don't forget, 20% off all orders over $50 globally. Head on over to the Etsy shop. Other than that, you guys, see y'all again soon.